A blessed Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to BSN TV. I would like to welcome you to yet another study on uh, the present truth uh, before the feast of the Passover. I would like to welcome you all to this beautiful uh, discussion that we have today. And uh, before we go into it, I would like to introduce uh, Elder Mashiri to the platform. Blessed Sabbath, Elder. Blessed Sabbath, Pastor, and blessed Sabbath, all viewers and listeners. Amen. So today we are taking uh, our discussion, our discussion on uh, the question that we have actually is about the fountain opened to the house of David and the mighty river to the world. I think we touched a bit, and some people who were asking about the house of David and the fountain that was opened. I think we we touched, pardon me, we touched a bit when we were talking about the, the daily. We touched about the fountain open, opening opened to the house of, of David for sin and uncleanliness. And some people wanted more on that topic. So that's the discussion that we are going to have today. And maybe before we start, we may need to know what is the house of David, because uh, uh, that house is being, it looks like it was promised to be in existence in the last days. Maybe Elder, you can start on that. What is the house of David? Thank you, Pastor. We saw in the previous studies that um, when God chose a servant, the servant had, for the last days, has three roles. One role is as a, as a prophet, which is Elijah. And the yes. other role is a king, which is David. Mm -hmm. And the other role is Joshua, who leads the people back to their country in Israel. Mm -hmm. So, the house of David, therefore, like it was in the Old Testament, we had the house of David, who was the direct children of Jesse. Mm -hmm. So all and their kindred were under the house called David. All right. So, all of them, you would find in the Bible you they have expressions like the house of David and the daughters of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. You see, those two expressions are not the same. Right. The daughters of Jerusalem and the house of David, they are different. They are mm -hmm. all in the same Jerusalem, but mm -hmm. those who are ruling the royal house was the one which was under the house of David. Mm -hmm. So the same as in Laodicea, God has chosen somebody because it's the church which God says is going to be judged first. Mm -hmm. In First Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 17, it says, judgment begins in the house of God first. So if it mm -hmm. begins in the house of God, the 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 person who is chosen to bring the messages of the judgment of that church should belong mm -hmm. also to that church. Mm -hmm. So that uh, God communicates a message which is going to judge the people while they are receiving the seal, some will be receiving 666. Right. right. So the person who is chosen is a prophet, Elijah, we saw that. And Sister White confirmed Elijah shall be chosen. And is also mm -hmm. the spirit of Elijah is, is with that person. Also the spirit of David and mm -hmm. the spirit of Joshua. Amen. So when he, he chooses that person, that person has helpers who are first chosen and given the message. Like it was with Christ. When he came, he came with a message. But God gave him the 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. Those were under his supervision. Right. And were, were the bracket which, which 
Christ was going about with teaching all his laws, all his principles, but they were separate from those who came direct from the church on the day of Pentecost. Right. Those were second from those ones. So here we know, the first of all, before the 144,000 are sealed, there is a group of teachers which is led by Elijah. Right. And is given teachers who are trained first. Uh, according to the harvest, right, we find they are the ones who received the later rain in the first month where barley was harvested. So that first month saved for the ordination of that first group called wave shift, which is the same as the group which Christ had. Christ mm -hmm. had the group which were being resurrected because it was the first fruit of those who were coming from the grave. So the first fruit from those coming from the grave was uh, those who were resurrected together with Christ. Amen. So that's the first group called wave shift. We get that even in Great Controversy, page 399, Sister White talks about the wave shift as a group which was represented by those who were resurrected with Christ. Same as the judgment of the living, we have the wave shift, which first of all, Elijah and that group are the first of first fruits. They are in the Amen. group called wave shift. Amen. That's where we find the house of David. Right. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Because uh, uh, there's a lot that has been said about the house of, of David, their location, yeah. and also the house of Israel, or the daughters of Jerusalem. And um, now, since you have mentioned that the house of David, is, is it the same thing in our time now that we are expecting a church within a church? But yes. uh, there will be different... The, 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 the difference uh, will be in the ordinations and, and the working, uh, which is totally different from the house of Israel and the house of, 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 of David. It looks like it was a bit more favored compared to the house of Israel, because the house of Israel was doing some things following uh, uh, Ahab and everyone. Who are not who are not part of God's plan? Is it the same scenario that we will have in our time when Elijah is there, representing the house of David? As long as the expression says God is going to raise Elijah, no, for sure there is Ahab, <laughs> Ahab who is who was an apostate leader of Israel. Right. So why does God raise a prophet? Because the apostates came via kings. Mm -hmm. That's why you could see King Saul. Oh, yes. Instead of reigning over Israel, God made sure there was a prophet, Samuel. Mm -hmm. And even when David was there, there was a prophet, Nathan. Mm -hmm. There is no king who was allowed to reign without a prophet. Mm -hmm. So in every... Um, everywhere the kings were there, <laughs> we found there was a prophet. Wonderful. It's only when when Samuel was reigning, there was no king. He was the king and he was the prophet. That's why God was not happy when they wanted a king. They said we will vote for a king like other nations. Now God allowed them to vote for a king, but he also appointed a prophet. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. So now, this is very clear now. Um, the second question will be, now there is a big event in uh, the formation of the House of David, which marked everything. It was the, the killing of, uh, uh, I know the ordination was part of it, but the killing of Goliath was a massive event. And, and yeah. from that time, you would see David now had started to have his friends, uh, Jonathan, and later on he had an army. Is it something that we are seeing that the David of today will have to kill the giant, Goliath, and then the house of, of David starts from there? 
literally the ki the killing is the overcoming and the mark of I mean. the beast mm -hmm. that's the killing that we mean by killing because physically the old testament david killed a goliath well, but yeah. in the new testament now in our well, time the david does not kill but he overcomes the mark of the beast so the mark of the beast comes as a as a great Goliath, which we are struggling with. The mark of the beast bringing us all these perverted deaths of festivals, uh, these pagan feasts. It's all this Goliath that we have in front of us. So you could, you'd find that the mark of the beast will specialize on these festivals and the the Ten Commandments. Park and feast are already coming and being held, and you can see they are getting strength. And also the Ten Commandments are being perverted. We are going back to more people worshipping on Sunday than Sabbath. So we definitely have a Goliath. But right. who is going to overthrow, think, overthrow think, that Goliath is David. Yes, I think we might need to read this because that's very important. Because that's where the, the, the house of David started. It was this uh, event in which David killed the Goliath. And today, our David has to do with killing of the mark of the beast. Then we know the house of David now is in operation. Yes, yes. we can find in TN 8, um, 58, uh, first paragraph. Yes. So it's talking about the house of David. It say, start where it says David's victory. So we saw all along, mm -hmm. David was ordained from the house of Jesse. But yes. it was only a secret known by the, the house of yes. David, only. Yes. But there came a time when God wanted uh, the whole people in Israel to know that David was really he appointed as a king, was fit to be a king. Because you can, you remember Samuel went to Jesse to pick a king from the children of, of Jesse. So it was known yeah. in the family. But there was a time now God wanted it to be clear to everyone that uh, David was an, the next king. And mm -hmm. the, uh, the unfortunate bit was that when he was uh, ordained, Saul was still alive. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Like we know, the David who is ordained at this time will have a lot of the soul, which are the logician ministers, mm -hmm. will be there to contend with David. Right. right. So the, the David will have a lot of soul that hate David because they are saying, David, who, you know, it's, nobody knows how David was, was ordained, and even yes. the soul, soul didn't, was not present when David no. was ordained. So he only mm -hmm. saw now how the people now rallied behind David on that time when God allowed David to kill Goliath. Mm -hmm. You can see how useless yes. David was. They had left yes. him at home, and the brothers are the ones who went to war. And Saul was also at war. But they were being bullied by Goliath. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't overthrow uh, Goliath until David came with food for his brothers and found this Goliath bullying the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he had, to, he had to, you know, he asked, can I go and fight him? Mm -hmm. Goliath was just saying, give me one person. <laughs> okay, but one person, there was none. <laughs> so we can see the present Goliath. Once one person who can keep God's laws and God's festivals without any compromise. One. Amen. There's none. Amen. Amen. There's none. Amen. So David yes. said, I will go. And they said, okay, for him to go, let's dress him with the, you know, the proper clothes for, for war. Yeah, like, but they were too heavy. To they were too heavy. So they tried to <laughs> say, David, if David wants to work, he should go through the institutions and be trained in theology. <laughs> That's too heavy. That's too That's heavy. too heavy. It was going to stop him working. So he had yeah. to take all those clothes out and went without. 
That's how it you, defeated Goliath. You cannot, you cannot <laughs> fight Goliath. Goliath with a pamphlet in the match. No, 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 no. You need something, <laughs> something stronger than that. It's, you can see how shallow, how shallow the the reading is in those books that they are presented. So that the, the church, you know, depend on those books. There's nothing there. But the funny thing is, take, they, yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing is, they saw it that the armor. Why did he not use it? You you waited to find it, right? If someone was offering and then said, "Okay, use this." Why are they not really? <laughs> going attacking the mark of the beast now. Yes. If it was worth wearing, they could yes. have done it and, 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 you know, defeated Goliath without David. So yes. they wanted to say, after the, the David was successful, after he was successful, they will claim the victory. The praise, yes. They say, we'll put all our armor, armor bearer, everything. And that's how he won. So David went alone without any of those training from the institutions and um, we, we see how God says in the last days he will use people who are not trained from the literal institutions but we are trained by the action of the spirit they are the ones who picked the five stones which are the five messages yes. which are the five angels messages you, you can see how so has only three but five angels messages are with David and is the um, one who who succeeded after he conquered a Goliath. That's when everybody saw that we have a king. And the, the people were singing, David right. has co conquered 10,000 while Saul is just 10,000. The people were comparing the, mm -hmm. the knowledge which was in David, the, which is in David, they compare with the souls of the day and they don't see it matching. Right. Right. This is the comparison. Now, let's, let's read from that paragraph. It says, 58.1, uh, it says, mm. David is, David's victory over the giant, against whom no one was able to make war, typifies the victory of the church, the house of David, in the time of trouble such as never was, over the beast and his image, the antitypical Goliath. So, the beast and his image is the antitypical Goliath. So the mm -hmm. victory, those who are going to you know, succeed to, to not to receive the mark of the beast, we know for sure they are the one forty four thousand. But their teacher is David. Yes, yes. And but David has got what is called the wave shift, which is the half of, house of David. Amen. So when Amen. we see it in Zechariah chapter thirteen, where mm -hmm. God says, "I'll open the fountain to the house of David." Mm -hmm. uh, maybe probably let's read uh, Zechariah 13 this one this one yeah it says in that day there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness so you see there are two houses there yeah. there's the house of David that's where we find David and his house mm -hmm. the wave ship. Right. And also there is the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Jerusalem. which are the Laodiceans, where the one for four thousand will come. Amen. Amen. So there's two sections already. Mm -hmm. But then the fountain of David, you say in that day God mm -hmm. will open fountain. Where to repeat that verse one? In that day there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanliness. So there is a fountain opened only for the mm -hmm. house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. That right. fountain is the same one uh, that will be, uh, the one for 4,000 will partake of. Right. Remember, they are the ones who follow the lamp whithersoever he goeth. <laughs> So the fountain comes via the house of David and mm -hmm. the inhabitants of Jerusalem. So we know the one for four thousand will be the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They, they, we see them standing on Revelation 14, uh, verse 1, standing on Mount Zion with the lamp. Mm -hmm. So they are the true um, Israel that uh, God has laid in the Bible. And then the, 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 
the house of David, they are the ones who are sealed first on the first month, like in Joel mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 23. And then the inhabitants of Jerusalem are sealed. They also get their letter in on the third month, which is in Joel, in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Mm -hmm. um, so these are, they, God will open up the fountain right. to the house of David and to the inhabitants. What is this fountain? It's for sin and uncleanness. Oh, yes. And what is sin? Sin is the breaking of the law. The law. Mm -hmm. We know that. So this mm -hmm. fountain will make sure they don't break the law. Mm -hmm. And then the same fountain at the same time when they are not breaking the law will also purify what is the, the, the uncleanness. It's the ailments to get ill. Yes. So it will cure also their sicknesses. So this Amen. is the the daily that we are partaking of. As we have been talking about the daily, we see oh, yes. it is it has got two emblems. One, the the wine has got um the, the the red part which is the wine, and also it has the water which is standing in for the Holy Ghost. And the red part, which is the wine standing in for the blood of Christ. Those two okay. streams, they are taken for different reasons. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one for sin and uncleanness is, the, is, is, is both streams. They are for sin and uncleanness. But as we go to their physiology, you find that the, the wine itself has got components that are life-giving. Yes, which are the it's got the the the, the red part for the iron. Mm -hmm. So people who drink a, a lot of red iron, they are replacing their iron. Oh yes, it works the same way as beetroot. Beetroot replaces iron, so it boosts your iron. So the red part of the of the of the of the wine of the red, it should be the red wine, not the the white grapes, but the red wine. It replaces all your ions, and if you are partaking at the daily third hour and ninth hour, they are replacing your iron physi physiologically, and also the hydrogen which is present in the water. The hydrogen already is is a compound which is which gives us what a life giving, in this H two O hydrogen plus oxygen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Two components of oxygen. We know why we take in oxygen. The one we breathe, it goes to mix with the red part of our blood to, to, to form what is called oxyhemoglobin, which Amen. transports Amen. all the oxygen into the whole system of, the, of your body through the bloodstream. So this is the one that gives life-giving. So we Amen. know hydrogen is the water component and then the oxygen it helps to you know once you you've got enough oxygen your skin also the weaknesses you are healthy your appearance everything is quickened by oxygen in the blood that's why we keep on breathing with our nostrils so that that the breath brings in oxygen which goes to our lungs and our lungs the the oxygen combine with the, um with iron so that it is oxyhemoglobin, which goes throughout the whole body, and then the body expires. Expiration, when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So you can see how God made this emblem strictly from grapes, red grape, so that we get that fountain to heal our body. Yeah? Plus, Even when we are ill in hospital, when they are yeah. ill, they take blood and yes. check all the components of your blood. The very first thing they, they are so mindful of, and they can phone you the same day when they have taken the blood, is the hemoglobin. If it is low, they know they can lose a patient. Oh, so they can oh, yeah. take you even to get an agent, a blood transfusion, because your mm -hmm. oxygen is, you know, your hemoglobin is low. And once the hemoglobin is low, it can combine properly with the oxygen to form the oxyhemoglobin, which the body is in need of. 
So these are life-giving emblems. For sin and uncleanness, we can see uncleanness is the removal of all the things that will make you ill because you have got enough oxygen, enough hemoglobin coming from the red uh, grape. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. And, 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 and as well, the, the red grape uh, contains the high, highest amount of antioxidants, which are yes. very good yes. for fighting cancer because cancer is what uh, uh, the free radicals oxidizes in, in our body, forming all yes. those cancer cells. So uh, yes. the, the red wine has got the highest on everything that you can eat. Red wine is yeah. the highest antioxidant. So it is good yeah. for fighting those. It, it explains so why what he's saying. He's saying it's a fountain mm -hmm. open. Yes, for sin and uncleanness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So now it's very it's, it's interesting. Uh, uh, verse 1 uh he said that now maybe I can read verse two and, and, and hear the comment for 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 it. It says, "And it shall come to pass in that day," said the Lord of hosts, "that I will cut off the names of idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And I also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land." Yeah. So when the daily that day that they if 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 you want to see if there's a true prophet and the true disciples, <laughs> once you put the the daily there, it will show you who is who. <laughs> who is who? Yes. I remember <laughs> Pastor Dewey mentioned that. Yeah, it's true. Uh, sometimes you find maybe you could have two visitors in your house, and when mm -hmm. you say to communion, someone just says no, I can't take, and someone just takes it without even any persuasion. So it it only shows how different the two are. Because Amen. that hits on the heart. The Amen. heart which is humble. Not that we are saying it's got no sin. But God so it sees the humility that if you can mention any of this, that this is sin, that, that heart is ready to dispose the sin. So it shows who is who when you are partaking of the uh, daily. So here, we, when you go to that paragraph with, uh, of TN8, uh, 58.1, it has shown us clearly that uh, there will be a time of trouble such as never was. After God has opened up that house, that fountain to the house of David for sin and uncleanness. So we will know that their sins have been removed yes. and they are clean. That's why we, they have a seal of immortality. Amen. Amen. This is how God is changing the state of the people so that they don't just contract uh, diseases. They maintain that immortality. The 144,000 will have a seal of immortality. So yes. this is how God is transforming them as well. And then it, when we want to go, we can go to Zechariah chapter 12 which explains what will be happening in the time of trouble. So, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. Start from verse 8, and then we go to verse 10. Verse 8, he says, In that day shall the Lord mm -hmm. defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that mm -hmm. is faithful among them, at that day shall be as David. Now, and you he... can see that is the time of trouble. When yes. Christ has already stood with the 144,000 on Mount Zion, Right. So why are they standing there? Because now it is the time of the establishment of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. So the Amen. heavenly kingdom now will be having people who are uh, translated and mm -hmm. uh, he that is feeble uh, uh, among them at uh, that day shall be as David. So that's where we see that the house of David now is not feeble, it's strong. Mm -hmm. So, right. because of that fountain, and they also David becomes strong. Because the communion, okay. we should be knowing exactly after that lesson, what you are partaking is, is bread and wine. is actually yeah. the body of Christ and his blood. Mm -hmm. We are partaking Wonderful. that by faith. So that's how it will make everyone uh, as strong as David. Yes, and he says, and, um, uh, 
He that is feeble among them, at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God. As that's the why we saw. Yeah. And as, as the, the angel of the Lord before them. We said mm. in Obadiah 1, verse 21, when the wow. 144,000 come on Mount Zion, <laughs> they are like saviors. Right. Obadiah says, saviors shall come on Mount Zion. Right. So they have now been translated. And part mm. of the translation comes from this fountain going to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which are the 144,000. So mm -hmm. They are, they, are, they are receiving the seal. Mm -hmm. Come from reading all these scriptures while the fountain is cleansing, while the fountain is making sure their sin has been pardoned, while the fountain is making them strong as David. Amen. You know, it's a wonderful elder. It's a wonderful comparison that the Bible is saying here. It's likening the person who is feeble to David. He yeah. says that they be like David, then they shall be like, like God. And as yeah. the angel of the Lord, you know, you yeah. are like to go, what does it mean? Maybe we can start by what does it mean to be likened to David? And then we find what does it mean to be likened to, to God and to be likened unto the angel of the Lord. Those three qualities that the Bible is coming, the house of David has to have that by the time the ceiling finishes. David was a strong king. Amen. And they are, they are going to be strong in faith. Yes. They get this message and the message will be, you know, you can see somebody who comes, you know, so feeble. <laughs> Before you start keeping the festivals, before you come, start taking even the daily. You don't, you know, you see somebody very useless joining in. But come a later, a few weeks or a few months, if you see how strong that person is. Is it the same, same thing that... fights for the truth. Yes. What has happened? This fountain is strengthening, is making sure. You know, once you know your sins are forgiven, and once yeah. you are strong, you are not as feeble, you become confident. You find people now change. So something yeah. is done. So something yeah. has happened. Something has changed. It is this fountain which God has opened first for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yeah. It did the same thing that I hear people saying before I came to present truth. I couldn't even keep a sub. I was a Sabbath keeper, but it was so yeah. hard to keep the Sabbath yeah. holy. Yeah. But yeah. now it's so easy. I, I couldn't pay tithe. I couldn't do this and that. But when they have this fountain, yeah. they have this power like that. Is, that. is it the same thing that's happening here? The very vegetarian, before yes. you become, you, you joined in the a feast keeping before you partook of the fountain the, the daily mm -hmm. it, it's hard to be a vegetarian yes it, it it's is very a... hard to be a vegetarian you you understand when people are struggling to live the yeah. meat it's because they have not gone through a uh, and partook this fountain of the house of david it's really greek yeah yeah it's really Greek to talk to them about living meat. Someone uh, told me that <laughs> it's suicide <laughs> not to eat meat. <laughs> I think we were discussing with one member, and he said, yes. uh, we were trying to teach him that you need to be vegetarian. And he was ah, I'm looking for veggies and this and that. And in the end, he said, you know what? It's just hard. I'm just looking left, right, center for basis, but to be honest, it's just hard. That's what that's what's the scary yeah. part. So sometimes people find it hard. It's not like they think they don't see it, but it's just hard. They just need this quickening or yeah. this fountain so that yeah. they have the power is the power that David had. Yes, that's why when we are talking about the daily, it's mm -hmm. not a, a, a joking matter. No. 
is something that God has opened up for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that they get that strength. Yes. That's why Daniel 11, verse, is it that one which says, he yes. abolished the sanctuary of strength mm -hmm. in the dark ages. This is why the in 508, the beast first removed it. And once you remove it, you are feeble. Following yeah. the form that you are weak, you can partake of any sin without resisting. Because yes. the fountain of David, which gives strength, which is a sanctuary of strength, is not part of your, your system. So mm -hmm. God, that's why he said, whoever will eat my flesh and my blood will, right. will not die. In, in, in John chapter 6, verse 48, he, it basically means death itself. Mm -hmm. It means you will be strong. You won't be weak. Amen. Amen. So it can be from someone who is taking bread and wine and you find that person who is taking bread and wine he continues to have a habitual sin, you know, mm. committing adultery. You know, you, you know for sure he is taking that fountain unfit. Mm -hmm. Unfit because we have to make confessions of sin before we partake of those emblems. So Amen. what Amen. is it that is happening. You are taking damnation instead of a blessing. A blessing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wonderful. So now we move to the part where he says the the house of David will be likened as to God. To be likened as to God. Yeah, most of the people once you are talking to them, they 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 feel that we have got some some bit of authority. <laughs> but they don't know that. The authority only belongs to God. Amen. But God gives those who are in the fountain of, of David that whatever they say is authoritative. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. like it's God Himself taking talking to you in this final. <laughs> Why? Because they develop that confidence, they develop that strength from the sanctuary of strength. And <laughs> you remember Christ. They all yeah. always said to him, where do you get the authority <laughs> to talk oh, yes. like that? And some who don't know, because we, we had that, this wonderful manifestation of the power of God. Some will mistake <laughs> it for somebody who is holier than that, or someone who is uh, uh, judging others and whatever. No, it's because they are now like the angel of the Lord. Right. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. So, so uh, this power is a awesome power where the church is now invested with the power of God, uh, the authority of God to 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 to, to say things or to yeah. find things it, that they were not that, able to say before. Yes, yes. Those who are not in the fountain, some of the things they say, ah, they were not said before. You used to be threatened. Don't say anything right. against this one. Don't say anything against. But if actually, it's the it's the reverse. If there is a prophet, yes. you said anything against a prophet, you are the one to lose. Be right. It was not to say anything against the pastor, or against the evangelist, or whatever. It was the prophet. Why? Because it's the vessel God is using. Amen. Amen. You remember Amen. what they said to Elijah. I mean, mm -hmm. these children who were laughing instantly, they were, they were eaten by the lepers. Instantly. Yes. So, it is the person who is used as a vessel by God. Yes. A prophet. That's where you are not supposed to utter anything. That's where there is a sin of, of um, an unpardonable sin because mm -hmm. when God has any message, he raises a prophet. And to reject the prophet, you have committed an unpardonable sin. Right. Amen. Now, verse Amen. 10 there. Verse 10. Uh, it yes. says, And I'll pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And right. They shall look That's where we, we find uh, the third hour and the ninth hour. Amen. 
Right. I, I think my network there was a bit interrupted. So the spirit of supplication, mm -hmm. those who don't understand this manifestation, you, you remember when we were kneeling in church? Right. Those who were not kneeling were remaining standing while those who were kneeling. And they now, instead of seeing what is happening, they termed them a fugamist. They gave names to mock them. And it's because of their blindness. Mm -hmm. Yet God says here, yeah, he has given them the spirit of supplication and the right. spirit of, um, of grace. Mm -hmm. So it goes along with the one, you are taking the, the fountain, which is the daily. And at yeah. the same time, you can't be talking to God while you are standing. Is when you are when you are when you are talking to God, you have to show reverence. So God pours the spirit of supplication and then introduces us to the times of prayer, which Amen. are the third hour and the ninth hour. So that's the spirit of supplication. That's why you find in the spirit of office, and they are saying the praying company. You understand? They are named as a praying company. Not a praying church, but a praying company. You can't be a praying a, a big church being called a company. No. God has the house of David, which is a praying company, which has been given the spirit of grace and supplication. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. And it says, um, And they shall look upon me, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourned his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as the one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Mm. Yeah. So they will mourn to see exactly uh, how they condemned uh, the truth. Some of them join in after they condemning the truth. And when, like, like Paul, they are the ones mm -hmm. killing. He was killing the Christian. Next, he was the leader of those Christians. So when they see what the, the truth that they are practicing and the leader of the truth who is Christ, this will mm -hmm. make, cause them to regret how they never, you know, walked upright before uh, when it was Christ who was calling them with the truth. Mm -hmm. So you, you can see that there will be a great morning. Now let's go back to the one on TN. So we can see that when this spirit of supplication, when Christ stands on Mount Zion with the 144,000, mm -hmm. it's the beginning of the time of trouble. Right. Most people don't know that it's the big. They think it's the end of the world when Christ is, is standing on Mount Zion with the 144,000. But it's the beginning of the time of trouble and which mm -hmm. coincides with the release of the four winds Right. In Revelation 7, the four mm -hmm. winds of Revelation 7, and also which coincides with the beginning of the uh, of the 144,000. I mean, who come? How do they come? They escape mm -hmm. the slaughter, which is happening right. to those who were told in Ezekiel 9. Uh, Ezekiel 9, they were told to, 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 to get the seal. If they don't get the seal, then the men in linen and the five angels with the slaughter weapons go in to find those who instead received 666 in the house of God in Laodicea. First, before any Gentile has been approached, before even the 666 or the Sunday laws that we are talking about, before they are coming into place, mm -hmm. God has to deal with the house of of, um, of God or the house of God of, or the Laodicea first like he said in First Peter chapter 4 verse 17 he deals with them and finish first and then um, the one for four thousand we escape and stand with Christ on Mount Zion I'm waiting for marching orders now to go to Gentile countries now the gospel extends to the Gentiles Amen, Amen Amen. And the Amen. Gentiles who are converted will be carried now to the Holy Mountain, physical to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
while um, it is still in the time of trouble. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, so if 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 if, if um, this time of trouble comes, yeah, the house of David would already be sealed, isn't it? Yes. Now, when this Goliath comes in to forfeit the 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 the, 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 the house the house of David, because if if Goliath had succeeded, the house of David would not have been there. Yes, it's the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which are the one for four thousand. They have to they have to fight hard to maintain mm -hmm. the, the truth of God and not to receive the mark of the beast. So these are the ones that have been selected. And of course we've got second fruits in the church as well, who are not mm -hmm. part of the one for four thousand. They are not servants, but they are sealed already. They will mm -hmm. also be collected first. And uh, the, the, the probation closes on the Day of Atonement, on a feast. And then we start now the gospel being ushered to the gentle world. Um, so the destiny of the world is hanging on this house of David. Otherwise, yeah. without the house of David, we, we can, the world... We can, we can go to Isaiah chapter 66 and see exactly yes. those who escape. You start with the coming of Christ and then he goes now to do the slaughter. And then after the slaughter, he's, he, he has these ones who have escaped, escaped the slaughter, who now he sends to the isles afar. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter 66, um, start from verse 17. I mean, verse 15, actually. Verse 15, it says, uh, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by right. fire... So by do, you, do you see it? it's a coming of the Lord, yes. but it's not coming with the clouds yet. Mm -mm. It's coming with chariots. Right. And it's not coming to take the saints up yet. But He's still coming to do the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Read on, Pastor. For by fire and by his sword will the, will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So it's the slaughter of Ezekiel 9. Are we together there? When he comes, there is a time he's coming to do that slaughter. <laughs> it's not yet the time. We are back <clears throat> from heaven. No one has been, but is coming no. to after the sealing of the one for four thousand of the house of the Lord. He comes and he makes what he has promised in Ezekiel nine that he will go to slaughter those without the mark only, and it does not come near anyone with the mark. What is this mark of God's law together with the festivals and the God's a uh, Christ's new name, which are in early writing, page 15, which is God, New Jerusalem, and the glorious star containing Jesus' new name. Amen. So if that mark is not there on the forehead, he is coming for it. For whoever has, has no mark. Yes. Yeah. Right. Read on past this year. They that sanctify themselves. So he, he actually is saying he's coming for those who sanctify themselves. There are people mm -hmm. who are saying they are holy, they are right. worshipping accordingly, and yet they are missing the mark. Mm -hmm. So we know for sure it's First Peter 4 verse 20 saying starts, a judgment begins in the house of God. That's how mm -hmm. judgment is beginning. Amen. Amen. Right. Read on this year. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination, the mouse shall be consumed together, said the Lord. So, for I know you, you know, in the house of God, that's where there is a, a, a message on diet. Right. That we, we leave the animals. 
Right. That's why he says eating swine's flesh. Oh, yes. <laughs> For yeah. when, you eat, when you eat, you don't even know what you're eating. <laughs> so that's all <laughs> you say. He says swine's flesh. And they are behind one tree. A tree is a leader. They are behind one tree. Mm -hmm. And also they worship in the garden, which are the churches. So he Amen. has not come for Gentiles yet, for people no. who worship, mm -hmm. who don't have the mark that he has set. Who he said judgment begins with them. Right. And then later on goes out to the Gentiles. Right. Amen. Read on this year there. Mm -hmm. um, for I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come mm -hmm. to pass. I will gather all nations and towns, and they shall right. come. After that job is done, the one hundred four thousand will be with him on Mount Zion. Right. He now sends them throughout the whole Gentile world right. to gather the, those who are converted to that mm -hmm. message. That very message, which was in the house of God, extends now to the Gentiles. Right. With the right. Sabbath to be changed straight to sub Saturday mm -hmm. and the rest of the festivals. Amen. Amen. So, those who are converted, you will now collect them, gathering all over the world. Read on there from here. Mm -hmm. And I'll set a sign among them and will send so, those that escape. I will send those that escape of them. And, uh, unto the nation to touch. So you it. see, when I said the 144,000 will escape the slaughter. Yes. Why? Because this, the, those angels were told not to go anyone, near anyone with the sign. Right. So he says, I set a sign first, which is the ceiling. The ceiling. <laughs> and then right. also those who escape the slaughter have got right. the ceiling. Um, he's sending them. These are the 144,000. He's standing with them on Mount Zion. Sends them now throughout the whole world. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll send them. That is kept uh, uh, of them unto the nations. To Tashish, to Pooh, to Lad, that draw the bow, to Tubal, and Javan, to the isles afar of that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So you see, the gospel now is now extending to the Gentiles. And yes. these names that are there are the original right. names of the countries before all these independents have changed names. Right. So Java and Pool, if you go to the Good News Bible, it will tell you the names of the countries. So we don't need to do that. Go to the same verse. In the good news, in the, uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verse, I think it's 19, 20 there. And you find the actual names of the, those, uh, the names that are Javan, Pool, Lad, that draw the bow. We, we have seen all those names. So they are going to declare the same message of the three seals to the Gentiles. To the Gentiles. Yes. Um, and what happens then? And I'll take also... Oh, no, verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses, in chariots, in litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, said the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clear vessel into the house of the Lord. All along, the children who go to church, they, they, they actually prophesy that. Right. That when they bring an offering, this is what they will do with the Gentiles. Those who are converted will be brought to the holy mountain, Jerusalem. They have been preaching all that. And the time they bring 10%, which is the tithe, that tithe right. they are preaching a prophecy that some will, will bring even in tens. Right. Where, do, where do you find that prophet? Go to <laughs> Zachariah chapter 8. you find 10. Some instead will be going as 10. So the, the, the house of Israel at that time is 144,000, which are right. Christians. And also yeah. they are now the house of Judah as well. Yeah? <laughs> they, are, they are the Jews of that age. Right. 
But let's right. hear from uh, 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 Zachariah chapter 8. Start from verse 20. Verse 20. He said, mm -hmm. That's the Lord of uh, the Lord of hosts. He shall yet to come, it shall yet come to pass that they shall come people, the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. So you see, the, the exodus will continue. Now it will right. be one city going to another. Let's go speedily to worship before the Lord. You see, the Lord will be there already. So that's why I say the kingdom will be established already. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is the time of trouble. Why? Because at the same time, there are two preachers always. Yeah. They are the 144,000 preaching for the Lord. And then those who are not in the 144,000 who are leading these people in their churches will also be preaching against 144,000. All right. And some will be put in, the, in prison who are not complying with the number 666. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the time of their 666 of the gentle world. Some will, because the four winds have been let loose, so they are coming into from the time of trouble such as never was. Right. right. But the one for four thousand, because they have been empowered by the fountain which went to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the one for four thousand. They are mm -hmm. empowered and they are not af afraid of all that will be happening in the world. Because people will now be forced to receive 666 by the other teachers. Right, right. Which are not the one for 4,000. Mm -hmm. So you see, when the 666 is going on in the house of God in Laodicea, there is a mm -hmm. teacher there right. who is contradicting David mm -hmm. or Elijah. Elijah brings the statutes and judgment, which are the festivals. A teacher is telling the same, sub, the same students who are being sealed. But they are being told these festivals were nailed to the cross. Yep. So there is a receiving of the of the mark of the beast in Laodicea. And then right. when that is finished and we see we have seen that it finishes with a slot of from Ezekiel 9 when Christ comes. And then mm -hmm. when he comes, then followed by the time of trouble, such as never, because the four winds we have left let loose. And then now the Gentiles are sealed in a time of trouble such as never was. This is what we get in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. That John says, I now saw a greater multitude which no man can number. And he's being asked, where are these coming from? They're saying they are coming from a time of tribulation. That's the tribulation when the 666 is empowered to say whoever does not receive the mark on the hand or on the forehead should be arrested, should be killed. It will be a time of trouble such as never was. So the one for four thousand and the inhabitants of, of of Jerusalem or the 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 house of David are sealed in a time when the four winds are are held. Yes, yes. So we can Amen. see now the four winds are being let loose. Chaos yes. coming in the world, they are letting loose bit by <laughs> Bit so that we yeah. know that it will be very soon, it will be a time of turmoil. Yeah, I mean, and it says, Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord, Lord of us in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. So they are now going back, they are now going back to the headquarters where the disciples, the early Christian church, had their headquarters in Jerusalem. Um, Up until um, the dark ages, then the woman was given eagle's wing to fly to make headquarters to other Gentile countries. So, but now, in the time of trouble, many people now will go where the headquarters was in yeah. Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. And that's where Christ will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he says, that said the Lord of us, in those days, he shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, 
for we have heard that God is with you. Now, there, there the, we are reading the antitype of the 10% that the children send to church. Mm. They are prophesying that 10 will hold this cat of him who is the one for 4,000, or the Jew at that time. The one for 4,000, they say, we will go with you. For we have yeah. heard that he is with you. They know now Christ is in Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Is that way with that verse uh, uh, applies where he says he will be bringing in the sheaves? The offerings. The, the, the these are the offerings and the sheaves being brought to the holy mountain, Jerusalem. Ah, Amen. Amen. So there's Amen. a lot in front of us when the kingdom is established. It's now the time for the time of trouble such as never. Which Daniel chapter 12 says, when Michael stand, then next is the time of trouble such as never was. And the resurrection for two types of people, the wicked and righteous. It is in the special resurrection. When Michael stands in Mount Zion. Amen. Now the question is probably that, that some of the viewers who have seen it for the first time will be thinking, if you look at Israel, it's a small, small, small land. You can come from one end to the other in, in a single day. How will all these people feel and fit? Yeah, like when God was saying, build the ark to Noah. But yes. everyone in, on earth was supposed to fit in the ark. Right. What foresaw for that they didn't even need a big ark because they were only going to be eight. <laughs> right. So he knows they are just going to be few. What a mm. large church and large this year. They will tell you of millions of people as membership. But look, right. we have the web shift and the one for 4,000 and the second fruits. They are not that many. No, no. They are not that many. The rest we saw in Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, that the, the, the dragon took water, mm. drank a lot of water, and spat it to the woman. Right. And what is water? The people's multitudes, mm. tongues, and nations. People who are not mm. Israel, who are not the, 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 the proper seed of, of the church of God. Mm -hmm. And spat at them to lead the church into perdition. But thank God. He came up with the plan of the one for four thousand, the wave shift, who are going to be sealed. Otherwise, everyone was going to be in the pit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So it, it, at least now we know, well, because that was the most uh, hindrance for most people saying, oh, how will we feed? What about the poor? Well, but it looks like on that base, the, 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 the transport has been provided already. Oh, yeah, we saw yeah. The, on that verse, they, they will have swift beasts. Maybe yes. these are the plans. These are the plans. They will have horses on horses, on chariots. Then the transport is there. So it's, it's, it's you who, does, who don't want, because the transport God has said, they shall bring you. Yeah, swift. because God operates where there is a will. Amen. Amen. Where there are doubts, he doesn't operate with people with yeah. doubts. And if you are still doubting about the message, God does not do anything to your spiritual life. But he operates only where there is a will, he finds a way. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. So that, that being said, we see the, the, the part of David being feeble. Yeah. And becoming stronger. I yeah. think it applies even uh, when we are saying we have to go to Israel. You have to be strong. Otherwise, if you are a feeble man, there are many hindrances that can knock your confidence. So you yeah. need to have that courage. That courage, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, again, it comes, from, it comes from the fountain, the daily. The fountain yeah. from the house of David will give you that strength. It's a sanctuary of strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. So uh, there's a bit that I wanted to read <clears throat> following uh, on HT page uh, 58.2, I think, where it says uh, uh, the giant Goliath accordingly represents those 
who now defile the servants of God and who shall compromise, comprise, sorry, comprise the image of the beast, the religious political system, we shall defile the armies of the Lord and issue a de decree that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark and the name of the beast or the number of his name and cause them and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Should this be taken uh, uh, metaphorically or literally? Because I've seen people saying this is not uh, our churches. If you don't do this, we'll check you out of the church. If you not, you don't wear this uniform, is it metaphorically being fulfilled by that verse? Yeah, let's not forget that when the seal starts in Laodicea, the four winds are held. Right, right. And when the four winds are held, they, 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 those who are sealed don't get a physical persecution. Mm -hmm. They only get spiritual persecution of being cast as a devil, or being uh, called all names, and you know by the other brethren. So this is the, the this is the, the the only thing that they get. But those who are going to be sealed, when the four winds are held, are going into a time of trouble such as never was. Oh yeah, when they, the winds are loosed, yeah. Yes, so these are the ones who should be, who will be ordered to be killed for not complying with the world. Amen. So there will be the mark of the beast and the one who enforces it will be the one ordering people who don't comply to be arrested, to be killed. It will be another image of the first beast of dark ages. All right. Correct. This is not the same person who, are operating, who was operating in the Dark Ages. Dark ages. A different no, no, no. one who has both who has yes. both civil and religious powers. As yes. it was in the Dark Ages, the beast mm -hmm. in the Dark Ages had, had both religious and civil powers. So that's where mm -hmm. we are going. True, true. That's the image of the first beast. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And it says, it says here, uh, the giant Goliath needs a feeble David to challenge him. That's the only difference. People yes. are used to the, to the giant Goliath changing times and laws in the church and everything. Someone right. who's a giant who they cannot even oppose. Mm -hmm. But he only needed a feeble David. Who yes. only picked the five stones, which are five mm -hmm. angels' messages. Right. That's all David needed. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that overcome the mark of the beast. Right, right. Yeah. He says... The giant Goliath needs a feeble David to challenge him. But in that day, said the Lord, will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people? All that burden themselves will be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered against it. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. So those who are who are being sealed is from the Gentile world, once yes. they get in touch with the uh, fountain of uh, the house of David or the daily, they will mm -hmm. be strong. Mm -hmm. They will be strong and even if they are being ordered to be in prison or killed, they will be brave. Amen. Amen. They will be made brave. Mind you, even if they die, they don't die for long because they wake up before before the end comes. So it's something that we are yet to witness. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And it says... So let's five, see the, fi the five smooth stones. That's, yes. That David picked five smooth stones to fight right. Goliath. Yeah. <laughs> It says the five smooth stones in David's bag, which one 
with one of which he slew Goliath, typified the fivefold power in the antitypical shepherd's bag, the Bible, with one part with, with which God shall today smite the beast and his image, the nation, the uh, antitypical Goliath. Amen. So the one part which is the last, the fifth angel's message. Oh, yes. Is the one that gave all the fountain to the house of David. It's the mm -hmm. fifth angel's message. Those who are in the fifth angel's message, they take the daily. All right. They have the fountain of the house of David. And they are the ones now we have power to overcome. Why? Because when you are taking the daily, you are asking for pardon of sin, third hour, ninth hour, and it's also giving you strength. It's also giving you cleanliness from diseases. They are the ones now in the fifth angel's message who are telling the people to come out of Babylon. They know mm -hmm. now what Babylon means. Right. Because when people are not keeping the festivals of God, they are truly in Babylon. That's why even you saw the Israelites when they went into Israel and because of the festival of the statutes, they were not keeping. They God sent them to Babylon for 70 years. Right. So that term does not apply to heathens. That term applies to people who knew God who have dropped all his laws. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, and he says, um, but to get the full meaning of which exactly is the house of David, let us read the further foregoing exposition. What fivefold message do we have in the Bible? And since we know that it is by his word in the form of a message that he shall smite the nations, therefore, Obviously, the five smooth stones represent five messages, uh, the last of which is to wound the beast, destroy his <laughs> image, and free God's people from fear of the heathen. That's why the, the ones with the fourth angel's message, which was a VT or whatever, all yes. the, the people who followed VT or whatever in the fourth angel's message, they are still in Laodicea. Mm -hmm. They had no power. To come out. No. Well, their message never said they should come out. VT Watef never said they should come out. But no. on the fifth angel's message, they are the ones now in Revelation 18 who now know when uh, who is meant by Babylon. And when they will read the Great Controversy, page 390, they know for sure Great uh, Babylon is those who rejected. The, the 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 message from 1844 until today those are meant to be babylon right, right. so they are the ones who now proclaim you remember in early writing page 277 reading mm -hmm. down below you find that when the fourth angel's message came the message with power there was light throughout the whole world and mm -hmm. that light penetrated voices were heard saying, come up, come out of here, my people. Mm -hmm. It was the fourth and fifth angel's message which had that voice. The third angel's message does not call people out. Sister White clearly said the third angel's message did not call the people out. But the one which call is the one which follows her, which in early writing, it's shown that they now called them out. And the great controversy was proclaiming about the future. As this message is comes, it it will call them Babylon. So if you read up to the if you read and believe up to the third angel's message, the calling of the people out of Babylon is Greek to you. It's like actually people are confused saying, ah, Sister White did not say people should be should be called Babylon to come out. But when you go as far as the fifth angel's message, it definitely calls people out. Ah, uh, Babylon. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I, I, is it not the same reason that uh, probably the, 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 the stones representing the angel's message were, were, in, yeah. were with yeah. David, yeah. not with Saul? So no, Saul so didn't have Saul so didn't have the five stones. Saul so yeah. even didn't bother 
attempting to fight Goliath. He was Goliath. sitting there with the whole army. It's David right. who picked yes. the five stones, which are the five messages of Revelation 14, which are the five angels' messages. All right. Did so not probably pick... when you are looking at the church and thinking they have the third angels' message, but it looks like it, it is with the house of David because they possess the five stones. The five stones the third... are with David. Yeah. The third angels' and message it... Yeah, in the eating of flesh, health reform, and everything. Nearly all that is part of the third angel's message, which they are saying oh, we don't want. So probably <laughs> they don't have it, even the first and second. Once you don't have the fifth, it's no <laughs> point having having the rest of them because you don't have the fifth. It's like a student. Once right. you don't pass your O level. Mm -hmm. It's no point telling people that you even went for year one or year seven. You don't have nothing. You have failed. You can't qualify. If right. you are going for nursing or teaching and they want five O levels, you won't go and explain that I had year seven, year five, year whatever. They won't even listen to you. All they want to prove that you did that year 11 and the, uh, about year seven or five or one. You have to right. prove with an O-level certificate. Then they know you You went. But the, I can see people comfortable with the third angel's message, thinking now we are in the third, that's, that's the best. When God has exposed it, there are five. If you don't right. have the fifth angel's message, it's the one that called Babylon, that called people out of Babylon, is the one that identified what Babylon means. Right. If you are not keeping the festival, you are Babylon. It's the yeah. one that hit the the forehead of Goliath. Right, right. That, the mark of the beast. Amen. Yeah. It, it says here in closing, uh, all classes of Second Advent believers agree that the angel brought to view in the sixth and seventh verses of this chapter represent the Advent message to the church and world. If this is true, then all five of the angels brought to view in this chapter represent five distinct messages prior to the advent, or we are left without a rule to interpret this chapter. So this is a word to the little flock, page 10.5. <laughs> Our own scripture telling us that there are five angels' messages. Right. But Saul did not hear five was comfortable there in the army and not doing anything to Goliath. But right. David came and picked five stones. And mm -hmm. with one stone, which is the fifth one, he hit the mark of the beast, hit Goliath. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful because uh, uh, these five angels messages, we, we thought they are not even uh, connected with uh, 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 the events that happened in the Old Testament. But it looks like we are not just picking things from anywhere. They are actually uh, uh, forfeited in the Bible. So if we are saying, Elder, that these five angels' messages, now it, it, it begs the, this question, why David a type? I think he, he, this question will naturally gives us an idea why now we are expecting David because he is the one with the five stones in the whole Bible. And he is the one with the fountain. And he's the one with the fountain as well. Because the one we don't the find daily. anyone with that symbolism of having five stones, mm. the fountain, and hitting this uh, uh, Goliath, this massive structure. It looks like it's fitting perfectly that we need yeah. a little bit in our time. Probably in a few words before we can close, I know we are left with some few minutes. Why David a type? Yeah, because he's the one who had five angels' message. He's the one who, who picked those five stones with, with one stone, which is the fifth one, according to what we see here in TN 8.8. A uh, um, eight fifty nine point two. You'll find that what David did mm -hmm. is exactly 
why God says it's David who is going to rule. Amen. He is the type of the David that will be there. David picked five stones, and the David of today is the one with the five, fifth angel's message. Yes. And the fifth angel's message is the one that has already spoken about the daily, and the daily is being taken. Amen. Amen. To hit the the forehead of Goliath, right. the mark of the beast, to expose what Babylon means. means. It is David. So that's why David is a type. Amen. Amen. Ordained of God, not voted for by people, right. useless in the eyes of people, <laughs> but useful with God. The usefulness is seen that the message is given to David and David what he produces, mm -hmm. what he, he, he preaches about, Saul will never comprehend. Saul did not even have five stones. Saul no, did not no. even, he, he was comfortable. I, do, I doubt if he ever had even three. He was, he was oh, sitting there, no. he didn't have three. So what, why, what more with five? It was something else. Amen, amen. I mean, so that's that why the fountain the fountain clearly goes to David, to the, yes. to the house of David. Amen. So so I, I think because of our time we'll end it here. And I think our we have done justice to this study, but I think we'll continue elder. Uh, it looks like uh, this fountain will go into that um, uh, mighty river of Ezekiel uh, 47. 47, that, yeah. That section, when it starts as a fountain, then it becomes a big river. I, I yeah. think that could be our next study and seeing what does that uh, uh, prophesy in our time. And uh, I think it will highlight some of the things that we've been saying through the SOP, but now it could be vindicated uh, through these prophecies that are in the Bible. So I would like to thank you. Do you have any last words for our viewers uh, before we can close? Yeah, we had promised last time that we we can show the people how to calculate the third hour and ninth hour. It's simple. Oh, yeah. In any country that you are, there is a sun. You go to the Met office or phone them. They will tell you what time is sunset or sunrise. So you take all those hours, supposing sun, sunrise is 6 o'clock. So yeah. from 6 o'clock and then sunset could be maybe 7. So you can group all those hours and change them into minutes and divide by 12. Right. And then uh. when you divide by 12, then you get the length of an hour. Right. It could be sometimes 40 minutes. It could be 60. It could be more than that. But... Then, if you know the length of the hour, starting from sunrise, the, the length of an hour, if it is maybe a 40 minutes, so the first 40 minutes is the first hour, second 40 minutes is second hour, third 40, 40 minutes is the third hour. Oh. And then also you continue until ninth hour, tenth, until 12 hours. But if that is very hard for you, inbox us. We have somebody who does for every country. It's there on on internet where each country's sunrise and sun, sunset is there and we have very intelligent boys who calculate for for us on a monthly basis and you can request for the for the emblem chart which will go for 30 days and you just put it on your wall follow those times you know the times when God visits you in your different hemispheres and in different localities and countries. Amen. I mean, that was short and precise. And I would like to, to, to emphasize that uh, you don't have to be uh, scared. This is where you have to be strong because uh, these hours are for you. You will prepare everything for yourself and pray to God on your own. You are not coerced to, to think, oh, this is that, uh, this is the it is something that you have to make a decision you have to do it and that's uh, why the, that's why the devil to, uh, took it away he yes. saw people who were going to be very confident worshiping god 
without fear of anything. So he removed the daily fast before he removed all the times and festivals. Amen, amen. And we've got some men, uh, good people who are from different countries who are receiving these. Uh, uh, yeah, on a, yeah. On a we have as much. There are many, but yeah. those who who are not receiving, who can request it for their times in their places, who are not comfortable calculating for themselves. They are still able to request on our inbox. We will humbly send them their emblem chat on a monthly basis. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder. I would like to thank you once again as we end this uh, study and say blessed Sabbath to all our viewers. We'll meet again in the morning as we continue on this plan of salvation to make sure everyone is equipped for the day of the Lord. May God bless you all and have a blessed Sabbath. Amen.